Just two verses, verse 51 and 52. And then we're going to the book of James, chapter 5, and read a couple of verses, 7 and 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. And when you find it, and if you're able, I invite you to stand for the reading of God's Word. Praise the Lord. Amen. It says right here, behold, which means to pay attention. Take notice. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Here's how quick it's going to happen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, boy, that's quick, isn't it? At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Hallelujah. We've got a name that we call that. Call it the rapture. The great catching away. Amen. The Lord's coming back. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. Look with me in the book of James, would you? The book of James, chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. I, I don't want to leave our young people out. Boy, we've got a lot of young people here, a lot of young married couples here. And I know that most of the time a message like this would probably seem to be focused in on the older generation because... We've got a lot more years behind us than we do ahead of us. But I'm telling you something, the Lord's coming back one day. Amen. It's not going to be according to how old you are. It's going to be according to whether or not you're ready to go or not. There's going to be a group of young people. Amen. That's going to be here when the Lord comes back. I want them to be ready, don't you? This is what it says. Probably if you ask some of our elders here, to, amen, they'd probably say, well, I surely would have thought the Lord would have come back by now. Come on. Amen. I mean, who would have ever thought 2023? But it says right here in James chapter 5 and verse 7 and 8, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord, Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. It's almost, it seems like people don't want to hear a message on the coming of the Lord because it's been so long. But I'm telling you, the Lord's coming back. I'm telling you, we need to be ready for that day when the Lord comes. Come on, glory to God. So here's what I want to preach on just for a few moments here, if the Lord will help me. I want to preach on I'm just waiting on the change. Amen. Amen. Come on, praise the Lord. Amen. Now, unless you're just a millionaire and you go in and pay for something, there's very few times we just say keep the change. Come on, amen. We'll stand there and wait on our change, won't we? Come on, glory to God. Well, I'm going to tell you something. There's a change coming. And the Lord's going to come back. And all this turmoil we've been through is going to be gone. And I'm looking forward to that. And I'm just waiting on the change. Hallelujah. Would you pray with me? And let's ask God to have his way here this evening. Holy God, 
I sure thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come back here tonight. I thank you, God, for the way you moved this morning, Lord. God, through the singing, Lord, through everything, helping me be able to finish the message to preach and touching us in our body, and we still need another touch again tonight. And God, I just know, Lord, you have brought us here together, Lord. God, to help us tonight, the Lord, to be looking for your soon return. I'm asking you, God, Lord, to move upon the hearts of every individual here. God, I'm asking you to put a longing in these young people's heart. God, to be looking for you whenever that day comes. And Lord, we glorify you and we praise you and we give you all the honor that's due unto thy holy name. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody can say amen. 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 You can be seated. Amen if you want to be. Praise the Lord. I remember, amen, back in 2009 going to hear Brother Clendenin preach, amen, in a meeting in Wetumpka, Alabama. I remember very well, amen, him standing up there, and I'm thinking it was somewhere, Brother Jerry, you might remember, I'm thinking just about six or maybe seven, eight weeks after he preached that meeting, he went home to be with the Lord. Amen. I was with Brother Jerry and Sister Tracy and some of their church folk. But I remember something that he said that has stuck with me, amen, ever since, amen, that meeting in 2009, uh, that 87-year-old preacher, amen, that had pastored for all them years and then became a, a missionary to Russia at age 70, amen, up to 87. I mean, I'm sure you know the history of Brother Clendenin, amen. But listen, there was something that he said that got a hold of me in that meeting, he said, boys, you got to act like you're going to be here a while, but you got to live like you're leaving tomorrow. Come on, amen. And that has stuck with me down through the years. There's so many times that we take life for granted. Come on, glory to God. Uh, we just, uh, you know, go through our busy routine, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, amen. But the Bible said, if it be the Lord will. How many of you remember when people used to talk that way, amen? Uh, sometimes we think, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that, but I tell you, I want it to be in God's will, don't you? Amen. And, and so I look at this uh, scripture that we've read tonight. Amen. About the coming of the Lord and about waiting upon, amen, the coming of the Lord. And, you know, uh, you look up there at me tonight, and how many of you know I got a birthday coming up June the 12th? I'll be 30 years old. Come on, y'all believe that? Y'all look like y'all don't believe me. Amen. I was 34, amen, when I got saved. And I got saved on June the 12th, 1993. You see, I had a birth I can't remember, but I've got one that I just can't forget. Hallelujah. And in that same year of 1993, Bill and Gloria Gaither pinned the words down to a song, amen, that simply says, this is just what heaven means to me. How many of y'all familiar with that old song? I want to look, amen, at some of the the words in that song, a country where no twilight shadows deepen, an ending days where night will never be, amen, a city where no storm clouds ever gather, oh this is just what heaven means to me, how many of y'all right here tonight, amen, while we're living here on this earth, amen, heaven means everything to you, come on, glory to God, I, that's why I want to tell these young people, I know they got their whole life ahead of them, amen, and maybe they're making plans, and I know we got these, amen, young, young married couples here with just young uns and everything, but I'll tell you, I want heaven to mean something to me while I'm living here on earth, amen, and I'll tell you one thing heaven means to me, I'm glad there's going to be no more night, how about you, but in the days where night will never be, oh my, I'm looking forward to that day, glory to God, where there be no more sin, amen. No more darkness that we're living in, but Jesus Christ will be the light thereof, amen. Yes, amen. How many of us, amen, in our time have spent a lot of nights tossing and turning into bed? Does it not seem like when sickness hits your body that it seems like night time's the worst time? Amen. You know, Job had a little something to say about this. 
He said it in chapter 7 in verse 1. Is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? And are not his days also like the days of a hireling? As a servant earnestly desireth the shadow, and as a hireling looketh for the reward of his work, so am I made to possess months of vanity, and wearisome nights are appointed to me. When I lie down, I say, When shall I arrive? And the night be gone, and I am full of tossing to and fro until the dawning of day. How many of y'all have ever experienced that? Amen. Maybe it was sickness in your body. And maybe it was you just couldn't turn your mind off. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. You lay down and you try to get that much needed rest that you need. But then all of a sudden those gears start turning. Amen. In your mind. And you go to thinking about this or thinking about that. Amen. And it won't let you go to sleep. And you spend all night to and fro. Aren't you glad? Amen. That there's a change coming one day. That we're going to live in a place where there be no more night. Amen. No more worrying. Come on. Glory to God. No more of that devil battling our mind. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to the change. Amen. I don't know if that old devil battles your mind, but he does mine. He tried to work on it a little bit today. Come on. Amen. What's going to happen when you get back up there and preach? Amen. You going to have another one of them spells? I said, well, devil, if, you, if I do, it ain't none of your business. Hallelujah. Come on, I got people that pray for me if I have another one. Hallelujah. All I know is there's coming a change, Brother Eddie, and I'm just waiting on the change. Amen. I just want to be patient, wait on the coming of the Lord, because I'm going to tell you something. Heaven means something to me, even while I'm living here on earth. Glory to God. How many of y'all looking forward to living in a place where there'll be no more night? Amen. Amen. Nighttime is always referred to the darkness of this world. Come on, I, I know there's a lot of sin that goes on in the daytime, but it seems like when that sun goes down and nightfall happens, what do we do? We lock our doors. Come on, amen. I know God's not giving us a spirit of fear, amen, but of love and of joy and peace and a sound mind. But how come we lock our doors at nighttime? Come on, how come we try to protect our, our, our belongings, amen? Because I'm telling you, there's a darkness out in that world. But I'll tell you, I'm looking forward, amen, to where there'll be no more darkness, amen. Come on, glory to God. No more school shootings, can you say amen? Come on, no more babies aborted, can you say amen? Hallelujah, no more of all this transgender mess that's going on. Amen, somebody said, you better be careful, you're on live stream. All I can tell you is, amen, I'm glad this world's not my home. Amen, I'm just passing through, glory to God. I got my eyes set on heaven, How about you, amen. How many of you just waiting on the change to come? Amen. Yeah. Boy, the world's changed a lot, hasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy, we've seen a lot of changes in this world. Right. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. It's a city where no storm clouds will ever gather. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 30, verse 1, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O oh Lord my God, I cried unto thee and thou hast healed me. Hallelujah. Lord my God, I tell you, I felt something sitting over in that chair today. Amen. I don't know. I don't know if we had any doubters here. How many of you thought there was no way I could finish preaching? Come on. You don't have to raise your hand on that. I thought it myself a time or two, but the Lord had <laughs> touched me. Amen. And it says, O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of him, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is his life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Come on, glory to God. How many of y'all appreciate the light of God and it was shining light in your life? Amen. Come on. I preached at Brother Jerry's here a few weeks ago. Amen. We're 
The Bible talks that those that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Come on, amen. amen. I preach there's coming a harvest one day of our tears. Amen. We've probably cried. I don't know if anybody here besides me and my wife. But have you ever been under such a burden that when you laid your head down at night to try to go to sleep, you literally wet your pillow with tears? Come on, hey man. Just try to go and flip it over one side to the other, trying to go to sleep. And the whole time, amen, your minds are going. And those tears are running out of your face. Come on, amen. I'm going to tell you something. There's a change coming. Hallelujah. I'm just waiting on the change. Glory to God. I may have to sow a few more tears before my time come. And you know, it don't really matter to me whether it be by the way of the grave or I'm part of the alive and remain. Amen. I just want to be ready. Glory to God. How many of you know there's a change coming one day? It's all going to happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. For the Lord himself. Shout a sin from heaven with a shout. Yes, with the voice of God. Come on, amen. amen. With the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain. There we go. Oh. That could be some of our young people. Yeah. Huh? Come on, glory to God. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. amen. So shall we ever be with the Lord. And he caught up together with him in the clouds right. to meet the Lord in the air. Yeah. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Right. There's a dear sister back home come to a revival and she got up to testify. They asked her to. She's a great singer. Wonderful child of God. Lives godly life. Lives a godly life. But she said that just a few nights before she come to that revival that she had a dream about the rapture. And said she remembers standing in a field. And said she remembers it was like her heels started leaving. And she said all of a sudden they came back down. She said she began to see it. Other ones just go. And this is what she said. She said I had enough to know but not enough to go. Oh, come on now. Well, that's a message within itself, ain't it? There's a lot of people know that the Lord's coming back. They know the rapture's going to take place, but are they ready to go? Come on, amen. I, I don't want to just have enough to know. I want to have enough to go, don't you? I want to be ready for when that moment comes, that moment in the twinkling of an eye. I hope you don't think I'm being overly critical here because I love that old church hymnal. That's what I was raised up on. Come on, amen. That old song says I'm getting ready to leave this world. And I'm not trying to be overemphasizing here. But the Bible says, therefore be ye ready for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man coming. I'll tell you what, amen. I know we're in the process of getting ready, but when that trumpet sounds, how many of you want to be ready, amen? How many of you know there's a change coming? Glory to God. I'm just waiting on the change. The Bible says it this way in the book of Revelation. I love this passage of Scripture here. Chapter 21, verse 15 to 16 talks about a city that's already measured out. It says... And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof and the city lie four square and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed 12,000 furlong. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Come on, amen. 1,500 miles wide. 1,500 miles long. I mean, boy, isn't that about what, what we say it is? Or to our measurements? Yeah. Huh? But isn't it amazing that when the Bible talks about hell, it says hell is without measure. Right. Come on, I know that's not a popular subject either. But I'm going to tell you something. 
Amen. We read in this chapter 21 of Revelation where there'll be no need for the Son. Right. Come on, glory to God. Because Jesus Christ is going to be the light thereof. How many of you know there's going to be no darkness in heaven? Come on, we've, we've dealt with darkness all of our life. Even as children of God, we've watched how it's affected our family. We've watched how it's kept us awake, amen, at night. But when I get there, there's coming a change, hallelujah. I said, we shall all be changed, glory to God. An ending days where night will never be. It says in that song, it's a place where there will be no misunderstanding. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Come on, hallelujah. Ain't that, aren't those the worst things? The misunderstandings? Matter of fact, and I don't tell this to embarrass her. I've got it right here with me. i got to go back to that room with her. I don't want to get in too much trouble. Come on, amen. But there has been times I've gotten up and preached, Brother Jerry, and my wife knows me so well. I mean, we pretty much raised each other. I might get in trouble with the parents right here, but I met my wife on the school bus. She was 13, I was 15. Boy, these young people are smiling at me now. Come on. And I think the adults are getting ready to throw a book at me. But her daddy was one of them old-timey Baptist preachers. And man, we didn't even have cell phones back then. He had let us talk 30 minutes a night on the phone. That's it. And we didn't go nowhere by ourselves till two months before we got married. Come on, amen. He was just one of them tough ones. Boy, a lot of things has changed, hasn't it? Huh? I mean, a lot of things has changed. You remember the day of chaperones? Amen. But listen, I met her on that school bus. I was th she was 13, I was 15. We got married. I was 19. She was 17. We were teenagers when we got married. She knows me probably better than I know myself. And so, a few times, you know, she'll tell me after I get through preaching and tonight maybe one of them, especially with it being live stream. <laughs> she'll say, honey, I know what you meant, but let me tell you how it sounds. Come on, preacher, shake your head up and down. Hallelujah. Don't we thank God for our wives that help us? Huh? Because sometimes there's so many misunderstandings. You ever watch the misunderstanding blow up? Come on, amen. You ever watch, you ever watch people just get just blow it out of proportion? This is what the word of God, and I, I, I want to read the definition of misunderstanding. It means failure to understand something correctly. It means a disagreement or a quarrel. I know this ain't an area here that, we'll have, that I'll have any volunteers, but how many of you are looking forward to no more fussing? Amen. Come on, amen. Come on. No more fussing. <laughs> no, no more arguing. Come on, amen. I'm just telling you, somebody said, you mean to tell me after... Almost 47 years of marriage. If the Lord lets us live to August 19th, that would be 47 years we've been together. 51 if you count the four years of court. And come on, amen. You mean to tell me there's times y'all have little, 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 you know, whatever you call sanctified discussions, whatever you want to call disagreements. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. I said, I hate it. She's wrong all them times. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Come on, boy. So I see some of these sisters getting ready to throw something at me. Amen. No, I'm just telling you. There's sometimes, amen, uh, I'm wrong, and I just have to say I'm sorry. Come on, brothers. Help me right here. Hey, sometimes she's wrong. She has to say she's sorry. And sometimes we're both wrong, and we don't even know what we're fussing about. <laughs> but there's coming a change. There'll be no more quarreling. No more misunderstanding. No more arguing. Amen. About the Bible. Boy, that hurts me. When I see preachers get red faced and go to arguing about the Bible. I don't want to argue about it. Come on. I just want to live it. I want to believe it. Come on, glory to God. 
if me and you get to a place where me, we might not see eye to eye on a scripture, we just agree to disagree in harmony and keep loving one another. Come on, amen. amen. I, I don't want it to be one big quarrel. This is what the Bible says in, in Colossians. Amen. Listen. It says in the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 12, listen to this scripture. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Praise the Lord. And above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Come on, hallelujah. There's just some things that ain't worth arguing about. It ain't worth fussing about. Come on, amen. I'm just waiting on the change. Sometimes I get so tired of all the fussing and all the arguing. Have you ever wondered what it was? And I, I don't really to this day, I don't know that we could actually find it. But there was something that pushed Paul to the place to where he made a statement in the Word of God. He said, I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I want to go to heaven. How about you? Come on, glory to God. I said, I want to go to heaven. I want to make it to heaven. Glory to God. I don't want to fuss and argue, amen. I, I want to get along with people, amen. I, I, I know you've seen it down through the years. My dad tried to give me some advice just you guys, as a young preacher, you know, before I ever preached my first message on October 10th, 1993. My dad sat me down. He said, son, I got to tell you something. He said, there's going to be people that's going to talk about you, run you down like a dog. Some will even tell lies on you. Come on, amen. And he said, it won't be that world out there. Sometimes it'll happen in the church. Oh, boy, I know. That was a hard one for me to swallow right there. But guess what? It did happen. That's why it says in that same second verse, no unkind words that wound the heart will be spoken. Let me ask these young people something real quick. Have you ever heard an old saying that says, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? They're shit, but young people, boy, that's been around a long time, hasn't it? and these young people know it. Did you know that's not true? Do you know that words can hurt? That words can tear a person down? Come on, amen. That's why I, that's why I get behind these young people. Come on, amen. Are they going to make mistakes? Probably so. You going to tell me you did? Come on, amen. Sometimes I want to get behind them and I want to help them. I don't want to speak words that's going to hurt them. I don't want to speak words when I'm up preaching, Brother Jerry. Boy, I tell you, y'all may not believe it, but I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. Right? Come on, come on. I've seen so much hurt yeah. down through the years of people hurt by preachers that just felt like it was their duty to just bust somebody wide open. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, I don't like that. Right. I like to tell these young people, I like to tell anybody here, I'm so sorry. If a preacher's ever hurt you with unkind words, there's a way to preach the truth. Amen. And preach it right. And preach it with the anointing. There's a difference between holy boldness and just hurting people. Come on, amen. You know what? Another thing my dad told me, and I know I got to quit here. He said, son, he said, whatever message God gives you to preach, he said, whatever subject God gives you to preach on, he said, you do it with love 
and do it with the right spirit. I don't want no unkind words spoken. Amen. Because I'm telling you, words do hurt. I said words do hurt. That's why we got to be like the writer. I can't remember what chapter it's in in Isaiah. He's given me the tongue of the learned. That I may know how to speak a word to those, amen, that are hurting. Come on, amen. amen. Don't you want to help somebody when they're hurt? Yes. That's right. I want to help. I don't want to push them down. I want to help them. But I'm going to tell you something. I guess as long as we're here on this earth, there's going to be unkind words spoken. And I'm going to tell you, there's a change coming. How many of y'all are looking forward to making it to heaven? Yes. Where we're going to be magnified and praising the Lord. There won't be no fussing and no quarreling. There won't be, amen, no unkind words spoken. Come on, glory to God. That makes me want to go. How about you? Hallelujah. I'm sorry for everybody that's ever been hurt by words. Spoken by people that claim to be Christians. Claim to be full of the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you what, friend. I'm glad in heaven there ain't going to be none of that. Come on. How many of y'all looking forward to the change one day? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall all be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye. At that last trump. Come on, glory to God. The dead are going to rise. Hallelujah. And boy, when we all get to heaven, I guess I just want to look at this little song tonight. This is just what heaven means to me. I know sometimes, and listen, brother, Brother Corey, and I'm telling you, I had a dear friend of mine who used to come to Warrior and preach for me. He pastored down in Jackson, Florida. He's done gone on home to be with the Lord. And he, he'd come down there and he'd always, while he was in that revival, he'd cut loose to singing that song. Oh, I want to see him. And we had one sister there, boy, it would just kind of drive her crazy the way he sang it because he didn't sing it real fast. <laughs> he'd cut loose to sing it. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon him. I can look over at Sister Children. <laughs> she'd, she'd be having a fit because she wanted that thing going, you know, the way it was written. <laughs> Amen. But every time you break loose, you're singing that. Cares all back. Oh, that back. Ever to rejoice. Oh, I'm looking forward to going to heaven one day. How about you? Come on, glory to God. Heaven means something to me, brother. Eddie. Does heaven mean something to you right now? Come on. I said, does heaven mean something? I want heaven to mean something to these young people right now. But boy, they got a lot of plans. I know they're doing. That's good. You got to act like you're going to be here in a while. Come on, amen. You got to live like you're leaving tomorrow. And when I leave here, I want to go to heaven. How about you? I'm just waiting on the change. Just a couple of more amen to look at, and then I'm gonna be I want them to be getting the song ready. But it says, and I love this in Ephesians, Amen, chapter four and verse twenty one through thirty two. Y'all got time for me to read that? If so be that ye have heard him. And have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore putting away lying speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. And there are times, listen. There are times we get angry. Come on, smile at me. But he said, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. <laughs> Sister Kay, if my, and I didn't go over, she didn't know what I was preaching tonight. I'm not mistaken. Wasn't that words that your daddy told us before we got married? 
And we were, I guess, so young and naive, we didn't even know it was in the Bible. Don't let the sun, don't go to, don't go to bed mad at each other. Come on, amen. Help us right here tonight, boy. Oh, glory to God. It's not good when you go to bed mad at each other. Amen. See, I don't let these young people got on these married folks. Ain't that good? Huh? But listen, he said, neither give place to the devil. Do you know the only place the devil has is the one that me and you give him? If me and you don't give him a place, he don't have a place in our life. But listen what it said. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hand, that thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. It says, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking but be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Where would we be tonight? Had God not forgiven us of all our sins. Come on, amen. I don't know about your life, but I know about David Roper's life. I come to tell you, I'm glad I'm forgiven tonight. I'm so thankful he's forgiven me tonight. I'm so glad he took those sins and cast them as far as the east is from the west. Come on, glory to God. And right here tonight, amen, I, I want to close with this one right here. And when, this is in the third verse of this song, and when at last we see the face of Jesus, before whose image all other loves all flee, and when they crown him Lord of all, I'm going to be there. Now this is just what heaven means to me. I preached at Brother Jerry's two weeks ago. They're going to remember this real well, I Yes, they will anyway. But I preach from Revelation chapter 21. Amen. And, and I preached about where it talks about the, uh, well, let me see. No, Revelation chapter 19. And it says in verse 11, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. Come on. You remember that, Brother Jerry? I preached on those crowns he wore. If you read Revelation chapter 4, you're going to read about the great catching away of the church. You're going to read where he says, Come up hither. Amen. Hallelujah. For the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout. Come up hither. And those four and twenty elders, the Bible calls it, are going to take those crowns and they're going to cast them at his feet. Hallelujah. And when they crown him, Lord of all, I'm going to be there. How many of y'all looking forward, amen, to being there? Hallelujah. Somebody, I told somebody one time, I may have told Brother Jerry and him, I said, listen, it talks about us mounting on, on them white horses. I said, my name's Roper, but that don't make me a cowboy. Come on, amen. <laughs> I've never really been around. I, I think I've, I've ridden one horse in my whole lifetime. And that was at Gatlinburg, Tennessee on the trail that they're supposed to stay on. Well, I had my daughter on the back with me, and it didn't stay on the trail, and it jumped up on an embankment, and the saddle come off, and we landed in the mud puddle, and whatever else was in the mud puddle, besides mud and water, amen. Come on, boy, it felt bad. That was my first and last time on a horse. At least down here. I'm going to mount up on a horse again one day. And Jesus is going to be the captain. And he's going
going to lead us into battle. And we're going to be able to watch him take that old devil and bind him with a chain and cast him into that lake of fire. Would you stand with me tonight? I'm just waiting on the change. Hallelujah. I appreciate the way y'all welcomed us today. I hope y'all don't mind. We've already fallen in love with y'all. <laughs> Come on, amen. amen. I hope y'all feel that same way. Yes, amen. And I'm telling you, there's a change coming. Yes, it is. Sister Tracy. And, I, and listen, I, I love I love watching when I go preach for Brother Jerry and them at Aldridge, and we'll sit around sometime for an hour after church is over. And I get to watch him play with that, that new grandbaby. They're only grandbaby. Well, you ought to see how they act. I mean, they just act. I'm telling you. And I love watching that joy on their face. Their son, Matthew, seems to come back in church doing good. Come on, amen. And I love watching that. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus is coming back. I don't know when, but I know he's coming back. He said, just therefore be ye ready for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man come. I want to be ready, don't you? I want to be, there's a change coming. Young people, I, I hope, I wish I could tell you, I hope you never get hurt. I wish that, chances are you probably will here on this earth. But when we get to heaven, come on, amen. I want heaven to mean something to you. I don't know. It just seemed like when Bill Gloria Gaither wrote that in 93, the same year that I got saved in. That song's always been precious. Country where no twilight shadows. I'm glad heaven means something to me. I've got loved ones over there. Come on, amen. Yes, I want to see Jesus. And all the beauty. But boy, I'm just looking forward to that. I tell you, I don't mind telling you, I'm a mama's boy. I'm 65 years old. I'm the baby of four. And I still miss my mom and daddy. And they've been in heaven quite a while. Huh? I'm looking forward to seeing them again. Come on, amen. There's sometimes I get going down the road, and that old Chevrolet of mine, it, I've had it for a long time. It come with a CD player and a cassette player. The CD player tore up years ago. But guess what works in that thing? That cassette player. Hey, sometimes I'll stick an old cassette in of Daddy preaching 30 years ago. I'll stick it in that old tape player. Get to ride down that road. I'll get to listen to the old dad. Man, I'll get happy. And then I'll get to cry and get to miss it. And I get to thinking about, wait a minute, he's already in heaven. Come on, amen. Hey. So I'm glad heaven means something. I hope this has been a help to you tonight. Don't give up, don't quit. Heaven's just around the bend. I'm looking forward to going to heaven one day. How about you? If you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord, you don't want to miss heaven. Why don't you come down here and let the Lord save you? Let him write your name. That Lamb's Book of Life. I'm glad my name is written. How about you? Yeah. Let's find us a place to pray. Come on around these altars. May the Lord bless you as our prayer tonight.